Everybody, welcome back to our playthrough. And again, this is a playthrough of Sleeping Gods by Red Raven Games. In the first episode, we talked through the setup, we talked about the characters, and we did the introductory scenario, which is on guidance, like on rails. But now it's not. Now it becomes an, like an open world game. We can make all the choices we want. We can do whatever we want. And I'm super excited about it. A couple things I wanted to remind it, because I, I talked about it in the first episode, but I want to be very clear on it, that I am using both the um, the Tides of Ruin expansion and the Dungeons expansion in here. And this deck of uh, event cards also includes the cards from the uh, Tides of Ruin expansion, P perhaps. I mean, you know, there's only six out of a very large stack of cards in each of the different parts. So I want to remind everybody of that because we're going to see a lot of things that uh, if you just got the base game, you may not see. Um, also, I think it'll be interesting to watch some other playthroughs and see how they compare and what differences happen. So, just to get us started, I'm going to talk about a couple of our two quests, and then we're going to get into the game. Now, we read these in the last episode, but I wanted to revisit them. We have the Raid on Last Hope, and our, our new companion, Mac, Mac uh, whose name is Mara Johnson. She's from Atlanta. Uh, but she's uh, here with us on the ship now. She said that she told us a rumor about a creature attacking a fishing village northeast of Sakura Trading Post. Well, uh, the village may not survive much longer. And then we also have Anne's Cottage. I think I found both those on the map. Uh, May is on her way to search the cottage of an old, or Mac rather, is on her way to search the cottage of an old uh, treasure hunter named Anne. Perhaps something there will help guide us home. The cottage is near a bridge north of Sakura Trading Post. Well, let's take a look at the map because I do believe I found both those locations. Now, the one challenge here is that to get, I think that's the village up here. Uh, however, we're going to have to go through a storm where we um, are going to, to have to overcome a strength challenge or take damage. Not thrilled about that. But uh, I, I also believe that the cottage is over here, which means we can work our way around here without having to suffer, or actually this direction right away, perhaps, because there is a dotted line there, which means we can sail through this strait right here. I don't know if there's, any, I don't know if we have enough money really to do anything with the uh, market. All right, now we only have three coins, so we might need to gather some more coins. I, I'm thinking about kind of coming up this way, maybe exploring some things around here and coming back around to this, the trading post and then maybe making our way up to the village, but I don't know how much time we have. We could also go here and go straight to the village and just try and make that test. Anyway, this is where it becomes really interesting because like I said, we are um, a crew of nine always, and we are able to do whatever we want and go where we want on this map. Uh, it, it will guide us and give us some, some direction. But anyway, let's get started with the crew of the Manticore in our exploration of the Wandering Sea. Okay, the way that the game structure works, the way the turns work, is we go first to our ship action, then we're going to take an event and we're going to deal with the action on that, and or whatever is on that, and then we're going to get to take an act, uh, two of these actions, which could be traveling, exploring a market, or a port. Now, uh, we can go into a port and that can help, I, I don't know what, maybe that upgrades our ships, allows us to do some things, who knows. Uh, we do have a trading port post in Zakara trading post right here. I don't think we're going to go there first. Um, I think we're going to do some 
movement and some exploration. But the first thing that happens is we have to take a ship action. So the, now the, the active player decides the ship action. Since it's a solo game, the active player is always going to be, be me. And uh, I'm, I guess we're playing the role of Captain Odessa, who's t making the uh, choices of where we go and what we do. And I think the easy choices for uh, uh, there right off the bat. Now let's talk about what these things do. Okay. Um, we'll start with the hull. The hull is just it's, it's just a point of, uh, the, of protection for our ship because if we fill up our ship with damage, we're playing in normal mode, so it won't be so bad. But we're going to have to start at a port of we're going to lose a bunch of stuff, take some penalties. So hopefully we don't uh, have people die. Also, that's true if all of our characters are knocked out. Have a feeling if we play a little carefully, that would be um, not likely. All right, um, so that's the hull. That's number one right there. Uh, number two is the deck. Now the deck allows you to do two things. It allows you to get two um, um, command tokens, which are very important in the game, and it also allows you to draw one of these tokens here, which could prov uh, provide resources. It's like scavenging. As we go along, we can scavenge things off of the lands we're at and things of that nature. Um, Going on to uh, number three is the sick bay. We can get three command tokens there. We also get a card. I think we have to spend a card. Anyway, I'll get the book out. It's probably better to share it that way and go over the different actions of the uh, ship with you. Okay, so uh, the that is the sick bay. Six bay says draw one ability card and gain a special number of command tokens, a specified number, rather, which in this case would be three. Um, also, restore one health to any crew. And then we have the, um, right next to that we have the galley, or yeah, the galley, yeah. The galley says draw two ability cards, one ability card if playing with one or two players, so we draw one, and gain the specified number of command tokens. Also, may discard exactly one ability card from your hand to remove one fatigue from any crew member. That's the galley. And then we have the, the quarters, uh, the, the, uh, well the bridge, the bridge is real straight, straightforward, it's up there at the top, it's number six. Uh, draw one ability card and gain the spe specified number of command tokens. Also remove any command tokens placed on all crew members. So we don't want to do that one now because we haven't done any of that. Right? Um, and then we ha also have the quarters, the crew quarters. Um, that one is draw one ability card and gain the spe specified number of command tokens. Also remove three command tokens from players. So until we do some things, I don't think we want to do any of that. I think our first and easiest choice is just simply going to be going to the, the deck right here where we're going to get ourselves two more command tokens. We're not going to recover any because we don't have any to recover. And then we're going to get... Now, one of the things about next turn is I cannot go back to the deck. I have to go somewhere else. So we've shuffled these up, but I'll do it again. And we'll just draw one off the top. So we're going to get some meat and some wheat into our inventory. Pretty cool. And let's see, I don't think there... Well, there are tokens for everything. So here is a meat token. By the way, it's indented and everything. It feels like a little piece of steak. And that goes right there. And that goes right there. Now, you know that one of our characters, our cook, has the ability, where is he? He has the ability to, well, I, I say he's a cook. I'm not really sure. That's Laurent. Laurent Laporte has the ability to create meat. Um, and there's also things you can do to, uh, like, like right here, we can make flabjacks if we have three wheat, and it will help restore our characters. We also have this food here, the soup. Um, and it allows us to spend through, uh, meat. Uh, I can't remember what the other one is. We'll find out. We'll run into it when we see it. it uh, the other resource and wheat to gain, uh, to recover three fatigue tokens and, and decrease uh, poor morale. Now, here um, we can spend a, a command token just with, for, with Gloria just to draw two ability cards. Remember, we can only have three. What we have in our ability cards is this uh, discipline. Give us another perception, but it can also, if we can discard it to get rid of low morale. That's in our, our hand currently. All right, so we took that action. Now we're going to draw our very first event. I'm super excited about this. This is so cool. So let's see what's going to happen. We took this action. We got our command. We got three command tokens to work with, and we're going to draw a card. Maintenance. Some of the crew members find time to make some basic repairs. Repair the ship. Craft five. Fail minus two health. Repair one ship damage. Um, you know, I gotta look something up. If we don't need to do those, do we have to? Because um, uh, just to show you, I don't have any damage on the ship at all. Why would I want to repair it? Let me check. Well, I guess that we it doesn't say we may repair the ship or may make a craft roll. I notice other cards do say that, so I'm gonna assume that we have to do this. That kind of sucks. So I'm looking at our characters, and I think the best one for the job is gonna be Audrey Williams. 
she is theoretically our repair person, right? Now, we have to make a craft 5, so it's going to be rel relatively challenging. I have a feeling she's going to end up taking some damage in this repair. And she has one right now. That's all we got is one uh, to be able to... Let's back up a little bit. Okay, there we go. She's got one craft score. Nobody else... I was looking to see if anybody else had anything or special. Let's look at her special abilities. Uh, we can spend two to repair one, but that doesn't really solve this problem. This is a, a skill check, right? So I think what we're going to have to do is... Um, just uh, going to give this a quick shuffle because I put those two cards back into the deck we started with for the skill and abilities. Let's see. Hopefully we get a five because that's what we have to get to be able to succeed at a uh, four, rather. Four or five or six to succeed at this. Okay. Give it one more cut. This will be our deck for the game. Okay. We're going to draw one and see what we get. A two. Ugh. So we failed, which means that um, our, our character, Audrey Williams, is going to take two damage also. She takes a fatigue token because we used her in, a, in an action. This goes away, okay, and uh, that is discarded. Now, once the um, cards are discarded uh, all the way through the deck, then we have to take some other actions. But that was our event turn. Now we get to actually take our actions. That was kind of a lousy card to start with for us as an event, but I guess it could have been worse. So we do have Audrey, and she hurt her hand or something trying to, to repair some things on the ship as we got ready to move. So speaking of moving, I think our first action is going to be a travel action. Now, how does the travel action work? Well, let's, uh, let's look at that. So uh, I'm going to go through these in much more detail the first time we do them. So we get to take two actions. The travel action says this action allows us to move a ship to a new region um, that are separated by dotted lines or the spiral binding. Um, of the atlas and the edge of the map. Wherever you travel, you can perform a craft challenge. So again, we're back to craft, right? Um, it, but this one isn't going to hurt us if we fail. It's just going to fatigue somebody. So I need to pick somebody that has some craft capability. I'll probably pick Rafael Vieira. Um, he's pretty good. It says, then you draw a fake card and you add it to the total. We're going to compare it to the chart that's on the uh, travel part of the board. So let's take a look at that. So this is the travel action. If we get to zero to three, we're gonna to get to move one space. We only need to move one space. So we are going to choose Rafael Vieira. I'm gonna bring him on over to us so we can see him. There you go. Oh, there, we got it, perfect. And then we're gonna draw a, a, an ability card and we're gonna see if uh, Rafael can get us some movement. We only need one, so I'm not too worked up about it, but he has one and we got two. So we got a total of three, so really we were able to move one anyway. And that is going to mean, now that didn't hurt him at all, except that he does, because he was navigating our ship, he does take a fatigue. I think, I'm going to double check that one too, just to make sure. Um, it's a, I just want to make sure we actually pick a character on that one. I think, I'm pretty sure we do with everything. But again, blind playthrough, so I'm checking the rules as we go. Okay, I'm going to retcon that a little bit, because we only needed to move one, and that, that wouldn't have been wise. So we don't have to choose a crew member, so I cannot use him. And we could have just taken a two. I really, I didn't, only, as you know, I only wanted to move up to here. So we are going to move up to here into this space. And then we're going to probably explore 34 next as our second action. That's the explore action. And I'll tell you how that works. It's going to be our first exploration onto the island. So let's take a look at explore actions in our, our um, two action selection process here. So um, where is it? explore? Here we go. Explore one of the locations with a red circle outlined on the region. Well, there we go. We want to explore 34 because I think, see, there's a, a bridge and there's the cottage. I think that's where the cottage is, and that will solve our, or get us to our first quest already. Pretty cool. First, choose the location, explore, and open the storybook to the paragraph. So we may have to make, we're going to have to make choices based on what is in the storybook, right? And let me get out the big, giant storybook, and we're going to read. There's, I have multiple storybooks now, so I have to find the right one. We're going to read from, that's the big one, so that's really easy. We'll read from uh, item number 34. So one of the interesting things about keyword uh, keywords in the game is if you have a keyword on one of your quest cards, then you're going to perhaps go to a different entry, and we are. So I'm just going to read this to you. It says, if keyword cottage turned to 34.3, uh, we, we do have, I don't know what that symbol is. I'm going to have to look that up. I don't think it actually does anything in the course of this moment, but um, it might mean that it's associated with a quest. But anyway, we have the quest cottage, which does give us the keyword cottage. So we're going to go to 34.3. 
but you don't read ahead or spoil it yourself or anything like that. I'm blocking off as much as I can so we can just deal with the encounter we're facing. So 34.3 is the one we go to if we have the keyword cottage on our quest card, and we do. You cross a bridge with wooden planks that dangle like loose teeth. We have to make a strength 5 check, uh, fail minus 3 health. Well, who's strong, who's capable of doing this? Maybe, uh, well, we've got a number of people who have strength symbols. But who do we want to risk? Hmm, I like someone who can fight, so I don't want to risk too many, the wrong person. I don't want to risk our doctor in this right now. Maybe uh, Cannon, Cannon Sharma, um, but he can also fight. Uh, we got to be a little careful about that. I think, well, though, we will take, um, yeah, let's take Cannon Sharma. He's going to come over here and do this test. So what do we have here? Well. Um, he has one strength symbol. That's all he's got, unfortunately. So uh, we have to make a strength five test. That's pretty rough. Anyway, it says uh, we don't read that. So first off, we have to make the test. Um, actually, it's, it's supposed to give us... Uh, let's see. Beyond the bridge is Anne's cottage. Okay, yeah, we got to get past it before we can do that. Now, it doesn't say we fail. It just means we take damage. So we're going to get our cards out here, and we're going to draw... Come on, a four! A three. That puts us up to a four. Now... I have ways to do things, ways to do things. Um, I can use any of our characters to expend a, a command token uh, in order to do something cool, right? Use a special ability, gain uh, some type of effect. Um, so I do have, for example, we do have the gear that we, we could basically, thematically mean we're like trying to shore up this uh, rope thing. It would allow us to draw another card. Uh, draw a different card. That's pretty effective. I'm looking to see uh, Kasumi also has that ability to draw another card. I'm looking to see if someone just has the ability to add a point. Uh, I'm looking to look at all the crew members. I don't see that. Oh, yes, I do, but it's going to cost us two. I think that's going to be okay. I believe that Mac is going to help um, um, our, our character Kanan to get across this by uh, we're going to spend two of our command tokens to get a plus one, and that will give us a five, which is enough to pass this test. However, I have to take two of these tokens and place them here to denote that we have used that ability. So our awesome crew member Cannon helped us get across here, uh, while uh, Mac helped shore up the bridge to make sure that he got across safely, and we have succeeded at that, so he took no damage. Now we continue to read on. Beyond the bridge is Annie's cottage or Anne's cottage, nestled amongst the fir trees, its door swinging in the soft breeze. Inside, a woman stirs a pot of broth. A blue lizard lounges on her gray hair like a uh, sultan on a pillow. Only briefly, she looks up and sets her gaze on Mac. You won't leave here with the map, she says, but you can have some soup. Uh, we, c we have two choices. We can ask Anne why she won't give up the map, or we can um, accept the soup while secretly looking for the map. That's a big challenge right there. Wow. Oh, man. Um, I think we're going to ask Anne for the map. Let's do that. I don't help totem seekers anymore. We're better off letting the gods sleep. And sips her soup, lifting the spoon to the lizard on her head and then extending it to Mac. Mac pushes the spoon away. Don't you want to see your family again? Of course, but I can't. The gods have nursed their rage for centuries, and they want revenge against these islands. They won't forget their captors or show any mercy. I can't give you the map. So we have a choice. A, we can convince Anne that you will look for another way to get home if she gives you the map. B, restrain Anne and search for the map. So we got a cunning six or strength six. One's going to uh, make us have to choose again. Or we can see, go see, we can set the house on fire and leave if if she won't give you the map and you want it destroyed. I, I don't like that idea at all. Um, I don't like that idea at all. So uh, I think let's try and convince her. We got some people with cunning. Um, hmm. uh, Mac can do that. She can take and make a cunning test. She's got a cunning of one. I know right now we only have one skills. I, maybe I should have drawn some skills prior to doing this. Hmm. Well, let's do that. I'm going to pull out right here in the camera view, and we're going to bring in our character, Mac. Now, she has uh, a... Oh, this is cunning. She does have cunning. 
So that gives us a 1. That's at least helpful. And then we're going to draw a card to see if we pass this test. We need a 4 to succeed. We need a 5 to succeed. It's a 6. We can restrain her for a, five, a 6 as well. I, I don't like that. I don't like either. Well, this one, if we fail, we just have to make a different choice. So it's worth giving it a try. Do I have any way to beef that up? Well, I do have the ability to draw another card if this fails. We probably will. A four, that's a five. Oh man, I'm just doing it every time. I'm failing by like one. Uh, she already used her ability, so we cannot, we do not have that option. Um, I can sp spend a command token to give her, to give some, to draw another card. I can spend it on the gear to draw another card. That's gonna be our last command token. Well, let's do it. We failed, might as well try and succeed, right? So there's the gear card. We're gonna take our last command token, put it on there. That's going to allow us, that's what that symbol means, allows us to draw another ability card and see if we succeed. Come on, come on, come on! A two. No, we failed. Okay. So, she failed. We can't do that. So we have two choices now. We can, um, since we can't convince her, oh, and by the way, we used math now for an ability check, so she is fatigued. Um, we can... Uh, do a strength test or set the house on fire. I, I don't. I mean, I don't feel good about setting somebody's house on fire for no good reason. I, I want to play like good guys, not jerks, right? So we tried to convince her, we failed. So we have a choice of going to B or C now: a strength or burning down the house. Um, I would like to get the strength. I think we'll have to do. We'll have to restrain her and search for the map. Uh, man, we're spending a lot of time and energy here, but this is one of our quests. So I think it's important. I, I don't know. We'll have to see. Um, I don't have any way to gain any additional strength, though. We still have the ability to draw an extra card. Either way, it's a six. It's pretty beefy. Yeah. Okay, well, um, I guess, um, yeah. Uh, well, so playing characters, I like to role play. Marco the Priest is not going to help restrain uh, Anne. So he's out of that. He says, I'm not doing that. That's not cool. Neither is the Doctor. That seems out of character for him, too. So maybe it's going to be Rafael Reyes, our our mechanic maybe just says heck I don't care we gotta get this done so let's um, let's do that okay well let's uh, give it a try so we're gonna try and okay and come on now we need to get this uh, we need to get this map so we're gonna restrain her we got I currently have a one again I don't have any uh, extra abilities to get anything right now so and we're burning through stuff pretty quickly actually I don't have any more command tokens so I cannot get a, a new uh, redraw so it's just going to be, take a chance. I suppose we can, um, I suppose we have a choice. Okay, it says we have to pick one of the three. I mean, I may be forced to set our house on fire, I guess. I'll, I'll have to check, because it doesn't say you may, it says do. Uh, we, we, have a, we have a choice of one, if we don't have a choice, you may try again. Or we may try again. I mean, our chances are no better, right? But if we fail, we're going to lose two health. This time we fail nothing. I could pick somebody else with cunning again. I mean, we're going to burn through our characters pretty quickly. <sighs> I don't know if this is worth it. Let me think. Okay, we're going to try and convince her again with cunning. Our priest, Marco, uh, Marco Reyes, steps up. He, could, he tries to convince her. He says, no, no, no violence, no violence. We're not going to restrain her or burn down her house. I'm going to try and convince her. So he has one cunning. We need one more cunning. Let's see what we get. I, I have no ability to influence this at all at this point, so it's just going to be random luck. A five! We actually, okay, we did it in the second round. That is, oh, that was a bit of luck there. So we succeeded because we needed a five plus one for his cunning. That's a six, but I do need to put a fatigue token on him, which I have done. So, so far, we have now one, two, three, four characters with fatigue tokens, but we're going to come to the end of the round. There's ways to get rid of them. So, um, let's see. We uh, succeeded at this point. So we're going to turn to 34.5. Let me get that. I can go with you, but it's possible you'll find another way. Or I can't go with you, but it's possible you'll find another way. She places a shaking hand on Mac's arm, and Mac, cla Mac clasps it. Uh, gain one coin. That's good. We gain... Um, and one experience, complete quest two and gain, and, and gain quest six, return to the ship. So we're going to complete this quest here, quest two, the cottage. And this is a good time to talk about experience. So 
Uh, we're going to make little circles. We got six experience from that, right? Oh, one experience, rather. We got one experience right there. And now when we use that experience, we'll cross that little circle out. We'll fill it in. And that's how we track our experience. So we did that, but we're also going to again, then gain quest six and get rid of quest two. Okay, so how this works is, you know, we go into our handy dandy little magnetic quest box here. We have quest two, which is going to be put back into the box. And we're going to go to, what does it say, quest six, right? So let's uh, go down to six. We don't want to spoil anything, so we're going to be very careful. There we go, quest six. And what do we get? Annie's map, or Anne's map. We took a map from Anne's cottage. It leads into the forest on the island to the east. Gives a little symbol there. It says Falcon is the keyword there. So we'll see what that does. Now we have a new quest and a new thing we can do to advance our, our cause of finding the totems. Well, that was no small adventure, was it? I mean, <laughs> it took quite a bit out of us. We now have one, two, th one, two, three, four people fatigued. Uh, that is, however, the end of the round. So I'm going to look up uh, just quickly in the rule book, just to refresh myself in, a few times until we get it, get it locked in, what happens at the end of the round. Um, I don't think there's anything special. I just think we wrap around and do it again. But we're going to, I just want to check and be sure. Uh, because, you know, we don't take off. We have to use our, uh, our, our special things to take stuff off of the cards, the command tokens and that. Uh, let's see, spinning command, I got all that. Combat, yep. Uh, end of the round, end of the round. Um, oh, that's the end of the fight round. Yeah, I don't think anything happens, we just end the round. I'm just looking to see if there's anything that would change that, uh, the turnover view at all. I don't think so. Um, event, two actions, again, I'm just double checking. I won't do this every time, I just want to make sure that we have it down right. Um, so... Challenges, activities, yeah, spending command. Yep, yep, end of turn. Oh, yeah, pass the captain token, which we're not going to do because it's just me, and then we're going to get started with our next turn. I think we'll take one more turn in this episode, and then we will uh, call it a day and continue on in a new one. I'm, trying to, I'm going to make these episodes a little longer because of the storytelling element. I think it's better not to tell it in small pieces. So um, we'll have a, a lengthier uh, series of episodes in this one. After returning from Anne's cottage, everybody needs to rest up and we need to recover some um, fatigue and that for sure. And we can't go back to the deck, but we do have some things that we can do that are worthwhile. Uh, we have one, two, three command tokens out. So I think what we're going to do, and I have some people, I have somebody with two damage. So we go to the sick bay, get three command tokens, but then I can't take the ones off the, of the people we have. We also have a lot of fatigue out there. Um, we could, so we could go to the galley. Um, let's see, I think we will go to, I go to the bridge, get an ability card, and recover all. No, we're going to go to, I think we're going to go to the quarters. No, 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 we're going to go to the sick bay. Yeah, we're going to go here to the sick bay. And in the sick bay, we are going to do um, a series of things. The first thing we're going to do, I think, is draw an ability card. Um, and we'll take a look at that. Remember, we only have we have one in hand right now. Um, and remember, we can spend command tokens to place those ability cards. We haven't done that yet. So we are going to the sick bay. It says draw one ability card and gain a specific number of command tokens. Also restore one health to any crew member. Okay, so we'll take this in order. We're going to gain an ability card. Here's our ability card. Uh, World Wisdom, it's got the mechanic symbol on it, which I like, the craft symbol. Discard this equipped card to skip an event card. Hmm. I like that. That's the second one in our hand. I'm going to put it in our hand with the captain. Okay. Next up, uh, we are going to get three command tokens. Remember, these are finite, so we're going to have to start getting them off of people as well, but I want to gather some up. And then we're going to heal somebody. Well, let's start over here. We got to, Audrey was a little injured during her uh, repair session when she was working on the ship. She hurt her hand, so she's gone to the sick bay where uh, Gregory Little, the doctor, has fixed her up. A little bit anyway, giving her a little bit uh, of wrapped her hand in bandages, put some gauze and some some uh, uh, peroxide on it, make sure it's okay, and sends her on her way. Now, uh, the, he does have, the doctor does have some interesting abilities to recover some things for people, but I'm not worried about that right now. Uh, we're not in bad enough shape to do that. She just has one damage on her. So, anyway, that is our, um, our ship actions. Now we're going to go to our next event card. Okay, let's see what our event is. Crew argument, uh, bruised egos lead to heated words. Calm the crew members. 
Cutting five, okay. Calm the crew members, we have to make a cutting five check. Now I do have some tokens to do, like I, I could do a reroll. Um, let me think. Okay, so I think Kasumi is going to take this, help with this uh, problem. She's going to go, hey everybody, we gotta chill out, calm down, I know that was rough. We should, and uh, I think maybe Laurent is going, we should just should have torched the place and taken it from her. And uh, Marco is saying, no way, no way, that would have been terrible. We cannot uh, take somebody's life from them like that, ruin their property, and destroy their, their belongings. Um, and uh, so Raphael Vega thinks that, that it could have been held that way as well. And uh, perhaps um, uh, Kasumi thinks otherwise. So they're in a big argument on the ship. We have to make a cunning five test. So we have a one right now. Let's see what we get on this roll. Draw a two, so we have failed. We got a three. Do I spend a command token on her to repull it, or do I just... I think we're just going to take the health damage. Now, I have to spend one on her because she was active in the combat. I think I'll put the... Uh, we're going to spread the wealth. I'll put the other one on Laurent because that's who they were arguing with in this event. So Laurent, Laurent and Kasami, Kasami got in a big argument uh, and ended up kind of fighting it out on the deck there. And that is going to be our next uh, event. And that is done. Okay, now we have our two actions to take. Um, I don't have to... There are things to explore here. We could check some things out. Um, I, I don't think I'm ready to head here yet. I hope that it doesn't hurt us that we're not rushing right over there to the uh, raids on Last Hope. And that may not be the place, but it's the only place I see on the map that looks like a village. So... Um, we could uh, explore this, this place here. I don't know what it is. We could ex also explore this beach. Uh, maybe that would give us some rest and relaxation. That makes some logical sense. I think we're going to explore this beach. We're all kind of tired. So we're going to go, we're going to first take an explore action. We're not going to move. That's going to be our first action as an explorer. Okay, so this was unexpected. I started to read it as I pulled it over here. It looked like a beach, but apparently there's more to it than that. All praise to Shorm, a voice scratches as you approach a tower of dry wood, a group of people fluttering around it, plucking and placing sticks like nesting birds. One of them greets you, his beard swishing like a paintbrush. Blessed pilgrims, the pyre is nearly ready, his companions scurry over. Would be ready now if you'd built it like I told you. Are they here to help? Could you? sighs the bearded man. Shorm's fond of fires, bless her, and we're, we tire of her earthquakes, and I tire of this one's carping. He tilts his head toward his companion. You meet a group of religious pilgrims. One, we can help them. Savvy six. If we fail, we gain, uh, we lose two health and gain a low morale. We can sneak away, uh, we, and it will take us to a different, uh, if we fail, we go to a different entry. If we succeed, we go to a different entry. Well, like I said, I wanna, we want to play good, guys, so we want to help. We're going to be savvy, savvy, savvy. Um, it's still, it's a pretty big, everything's like, seems really hefty, like a big lift to me. I'm glad that we didn't use Kasumi's ability to draw another card because everything seems to be a six and we don't have any abilities yet. Um, I don't know, I have to look, when, when, we, when are we able to place those abilities? should take a look at that because um, I think it might be, it's not an action of ours. we got port market. Maybe we have to do it when we're in a port or a market. I don't know. I'll look it up. Anyway, we can't do it right now. So we're going to have to uh, deal with this. I think we're going to try and help them. Who's going to try and help them is the question. Someone who's savvy. Well, the doctor, well, the priest is already fatigued. Eh. <laughs> Let me think. Okay. Yeah, so we are going to... Hmm. We can spend command at any time, but it doesn't matter because I don't think I have the right... No, it doesn't have the right ability. So it doesn't really matter what our two cards that we have that aren't going to help us here. So I think we're going to use Kasumi again. Now, uh, actually, that would give her two health hits. So I think we're going to use the doctor. We're going to use Gregory. Gregory Little says, yeah, let's help these people. Let's, let's do that. So he's going to come down here. He's going to help them, which means we have yet another fatigued person. We're going to have to relieve some fatigue pretty soon. Um... And, uh, yeah, so we are going to, we have, we have Savvy, that's the anchor, so we need a five or better on the card draw. Let's get the deck. Likely to fail, it seems like to me. A two, yeah, we failed. So I am going to spend one command point on uh, Kasumi, uh, Shomi's uh, uh, ability to 
draw another card. So I put that command point on her, then we're going to draw another card and see what we get. A three, four. That ah, still, didn't, still didn't succeed. So we failed. Uh, let's see. Failure, we're going to get failed with two health. Ah, that's rough. So two health on Gregory. A low morale token, which means to use Gregory in a challenge now, we would have to pay a command token until we've relieved him of his low morale. So we can do that with some soup, <laughs> for example, but we don't have the resources for the soup yet. So we, we failed, um, and we, we helped them. Uh, it says we fail, we turn, but we still turn to 18. So regardless of success or failure, we still do this, it appears, right? Because um, it doesn't say if you fail, do this, right? Or it just says fail. Uh, let me think about that. I think we're going to go to the next uh, section on that. We'll check. So the, the, the way the rules stated is, unless it tells you otherwise, you suffer the, you, if you pass, you ignore the consequences and go to the next part. If you fail, you take the consequences and go to the next part. So I understand we are going to go to 18.1. After the bonfire is lit and rites to Shorm have ended, the pilgrims thank you with the religious pamphlet. True Seekers of Shorm will start their journey here, they say, pointing to a map inside. The pilgrims give you a map. Okay, um, I, need, I need to make a note of that on our stuff. Uh, they gave us a map. Again, two coins. That is great. Now we can probably go buy some stuff. There's two more coins. Where I'm going to swap out the five and put the other ones and keep one. It'll put us there. So we got six coins now. By the way, this big one is a fiver, so we got six total coins at the moment. Um, gain another experience. Quest 11, return to the ship. So that's, this is going to end our, our event here. So we gained two experience. That's another experience. There are ways to level up in the port. Uh, and then we're going to get quest card 11. Here is quest card 11. It doesn't say you can't have, I, I suppose you can have as many quests out as you want to, as you're able to gather. Religious pilgrims provided us with a map to begin the search for Shoreham. It leads to a huge boulder in the east. We'll take a look at the map and see if we can see that. So that was good. We did get something out of that, but it cost us. Uh, our healer took some damage and he's low on morale. It just it was so, uh, so just exhausting trying to help these crazy pilgrims set up a bonfire to one of the gods here. What do you think? Big boulder to the east? Hmm. That would make some sense. That looks like a big giant boulder to me. Regardless of that, that was our first action. I think for our second action, do, we're starting to get really tired and a little beat up. So do I go here and take another explore action, or do I try and start us moving around here? We have to. We have another seaworthy issue here, so I probably have to come this way. Either way, it's going to be one, two to get to the port where we can maybe buy some things. Let's uh, try that. We're not going to use anybody for our travel. Uh, because we haven't explored these either, so if we go back that way, we might be able to explore them again next turn. So we're just going to explore. We're going to take our next action. It's going to be a travel action. I'm not going to uh, fatigue anybody with this. We're just going to travel, and we got a three. So well, that's okay. Um, we just are going to move one. So zero to three equals one on the board there. So we will sail back to here, or steam on back to there, where we're going to be heading toward Zirkira Trading Post. And that is going to mean we have ended this round. Well, we're not in the best shape. We're not in the worst shape either. I mean, we can take more fatigue. It just starts to, to play on us. So we're definitely going to have to release some fatigue in the next round as we take our action on the ship. There's a number of ways for us to do this. And we only used one a command token in that. So that's not terrible. So we have two command tokens currently available to us. We have to probably clear a bunch of them. We'll see. I can get two. I can go to the bridge, get an ability card a couple of command tokens and clear all the ones off the people's boards or we can start to get rid of some fatigue on some folks. Now we still have a number of people who are not fatigued. The captain, for example, Raphael, uh, Kasumi, and Laurent are not fatigued. Everybody else is out of the nine crew members. So that's quite a bit. Um, and uh, maybe we can get some resources to make the soup that we need and uh, relieve some fatigue and low morale, for example. All right, well, that's going to mark the end of our first set of adventures. We didn't move very far, but we did do a lot. We got uh, the, we got two more quests. We got Anne's map that we're going to be seeking. Uh, we've got to keep an eye on where that is. It looks like everything is east of us. We still have to go to the... Uh, the we have to, still have to go save that village, which we definitely want to do. Uh, I do think we need to get some ability cards on people. I think that's going to be very important for us. Um, and then, um, then we also have to go to... Uh, the, uh, now the Seekers of Shorm, we have an ability that's probably going to guide us to one of the 
uh, totems that we need. So that's very important. Anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks for subscribing. I hope you enjoy uh, this playthrough of Sleeping Gods. I know I am already. This is exciting. I love storytelling games. And storytelling games with good, uh, comp uh, what complex but not complicated mechanics is fantastic. There's some other games that are like this that have very complicated rules around them. This one, actually, the rules are really straightforward. There's, it's, it's pretty straightforward in how you do it. I think the most complicated thing is the combat, and it's still pretty intuitive. So I'm, su I'm really excited about delving further into this, and I hope you are too. I will see you in the next episode. Thanks so much. Take care, and I'll talk to you soon.